That's what happened. And even after you saw her push to the pavement, I think the most frightening part, at least as an observer, is what happens after. They just keep on walking. The officer is Vincent Dondria. He was arraigned by video today. He's looking at counts of misdemeanor assault, criminal mischief, harassment, and menacing. And he's the first NYPD officer to face charges as a result of the protests. Is that justice? What do you think? More importantly, what does the woman that he shoved think? Let's bring in Dunya Zair, joining me with her attorney, Tahani Abushi. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Chris. First thing, Dunya, how are you feeling? How are you doing? I've been better, but I've been worse. Uh, are you still injured because of what happened? You look like you took a nice shot to your head when you fell backwards. How are you? Um, I didn't know a concussion felt this awful. I, I haven't really been able to hold down food. I've been really nauseous and I, my head hurts and my back. But I, I'm alive and I'm grateful. Your shirt says BU on it. Uh, you, I get the double entendre. When you were at the protest, you were being what you thought was the uh, best self you wanted to be in this moment. What was happening uh, when you started taking the cell phone uh, video? Um, I wanted to capture the, what was going on around me. I could see that things were getting out of hand. I could see that protesters were getting hurt. Um, and I knew that recording is important. It's, it's always important to record what goes on when, when these situations occur. I didn't think that I would end up recording what happened to me in the process. The officer says, you need to get out of the street. You say, why? What's the criticism? You know what it is. You're supposed to listen to the police officer. He told you to get out of the street. You didn't get out of the street. That's what you get. I, I don't think that's accurate, Chris. I'm going to jump in here because Go ahead. The, the, the focus here is not Dunya's actions, but the officer's disproportionate reaction. And if, if asking an officer why warrants getting assaulted by a man who's supposed to have more self-restraint than an average civilian, right. then I don't understand why we even have law enforcement. I ask them why he should have been able to properly answer without getting violent with me. Now, that point is exactly why I asked the question. And I'm okay with you jumping in, counselor. That's your job. Um, but that's the point, isn't it? Uh, they are in the business of what? They are trained to de-escalate. They are trained to deal with people in exactly like this. They are not trained to deal with it the way he did. And there's no question that it was wrong. It was wrong on a professional level and now, arguably, on a criminal level. The charges are misdemeanor charges. Uh, he has not yet been terminated. What do you think of the idea that he has not been fired, or at least not yet, and may never be, and that these charges are misdemeanor, which is not good, but it's not a felony. It's not the worst kind of charge we can give. What do you think of that? So um, the most important thing here is that there's not a facade of justice. Um, we are uh, cautiously optimistic that there was a swift investigation and arrest of the officer. However, um, regardless of misdemeanor or felony, the most important thing is that this doesn't end up uh, with a slap on the wrist. The NYPD has a problem with use of excessive and deadly force. Protesters have a right to be in the streets to assemble and speak their mind. And the focus here has to be on his disproportionate response. So justice remains to be seen. Uh, charging is the first step here. There are many steps that are going to come after. And I think that the district attorney's office has to be transparent and accountable and collaborative throughout of this process. Counselor, and obviously, uh, you know, Dunya, you guys can weigh in um, interchangeably. It's fine with me. We're all having the same conversation. Uh, Dunya was assaulted for the very reason she was protesting, police brutality. Uh, there is a yes. tragic irony in this, no question. If he were to go to jail, would you see that as justice for him to lose his job? Uh, lose his livelihood and be in prison for a year or more. Would you see that as justice, counselor? I don't know if 
Jail is the right answer, but more importantly, that's not a question for me. Our justice system uh, consistently shuts victims out of the process mm -hmm. and either discredits them or takes them out of the decision-making process. It's very important. Dunya is the captain of this ship, and her perspective of what justice is and what she'd like to see happen here is front and center, because it could mean something different to different people. Mm -hmm. What I, I do want to make sure is that um, like I said, this is not a slap in the wrist. And when you mention things like his livelihood being taken away, mm -hmm. you know, Dunya was shoved so hard. He shoved her like an NFL linebacker that she flew out of her shoe, slammed her head into the ground, and she felt her brain rattle. Had Dunya ended up like the man in Buffalo right. who went into a coma, cracked his head open, and was bleeding on the floor, then, then what would be the conversation? And are we going to keep waiting until people's lives are in danger because of the use of excessive and deadly force to take this serious? Understood. I understand your point completely. Uh, Dunya, uh, now there are allegations uh, about what you did before. I don't see any of that on the video. Uh, about what he said to you, that'll have to be evinced by witnesses about what he called you, uh, the ugly uh, phrase that he supposedly called you when this happened. But the idea that after being pushed to the ground the way you were, they just kept walking by. What does that mean to you? Um... It's difficult to go after every officer in that video, but to be honest, not a single officer in that video did their job. They're supposed to be protecting the people. They're supposed to stop someone if they commit an assault in front of them. There was just so much wrong, especially Commander Craig Edelman, who was his lieutenant. He was there. He did nothing. And he has been transferred as if that's a punishment. You cannot fix a problem from the bottom up a lieutenant who could watch his lower officers commit a crime hurt civilians he's supposed to be protecting and do nothing about it that is a problem and passing him on to another community is not correct if you're going to solve a problem if we're going to fix the police brutality we have to start with the higher ups that are allowing citizens to get hurt under their watch there was no accountability from a single officer in that video. In that moment, in the video we saw, I understand why you say that. Let me ask you, when you're healed, would you go back and protest again? I want to protest so bad. I know that people are getting hurt and they're able to go out. Um, I, I'm a kind of ashamed to say I'm a little afraid. I am. Um, I want to, I want to, it, it, it gets me very angry that they successfully made me quiet, that they successfully made me afraid to protest. I should not be afraid to protest. I should be able to go and, and be there for the people who are putting themselves at risk. Those people are so brave, the people who are getting hurt and going back out there. I'm too afraid to leave my house. I'm too afraid to drive because I'm afraid I'm going to get pulled over and they're going to recognize me. I, I've been taking Ubers everywhere. So going to a protest, I want to so bad, but I, uh, I don't know how I'm going to get to that point. Well, if I may, Dunya, you're doing a great job right now of telling a pretty good group of people uh, why you were there, how you feel about what happened and what this is all about for you. And that is no small feat of courage after what you had to experience personally. Uh, I thank you, and Counselor, I thank you uh, for your shaping of the perspective on these issues. I wish you well, Absolutely. and I hope you always wind up doing what you think is right, because you think it's right, especially here, especially now.